Hey, welcome. Steve Watson here at Sunday Farm. Just wanted to discuss an idea, introduce an idea, review an idea. Um, and that is that our art deserves to be challenged. Some people feel that to challenge something, someone, is too challenging. So if I, they might think, if I challenge the art, then I'm challenging my teacher. If I'm challenging the art, um, it's disrespectful or uninformed or arrogant or classless or whatever. You could certainly challenge something uh, and have it be born from a place like that. But I'm suggesting that we challenge the art because if the art is not what it promises, uh, challenge, many challenges perhaps, and many well-informed, and well um uh, developed sorts of challenges can help to reveal that. And that may ultimately save you some time, save you some money, save your life. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you know, if I'm just looking over there and I see my car and I'm sure, I mean, I just bought it. <laughs> I didn't just buy it. I'm just saying I bought it. But I'm sure that they crashed however many hundreds of versions of that car and tested all kinds of things. And they devised those tests to crash them at certain angles, at certain speeds, with certain, you know, um, dummies, crash test dummies inside the car in different places with seat belts or, uh, uh, you know, baby seats and all the rest of it. And so they kind of figured all that kind of stuff out. And then I'm sure that there were some engineers, well-intentioned designers, well-intentioned that thought, well, this would be a good bracket or this would be a good shape of a seat or this would be a good material to use and they turned out not to be and then they went back to the drawing board and some of them survived the test and you know became the car that i have <clears throat> same thing with our art so if our art will survive the test maybe you get a little bit more uh, confident in the art in in uh, evangelizing it or practicing it or putting your money into it or uh, putting it between the threat and and your life um, but of course, that would only really cover it if you had a well-designed test, right? So not just any test, but a well-designed test. And that can take its own practice. How do you develop a well-designed test? What would make it, right? Often we hear the term pressure test in the martial arts, but there's a lot of different types of pressure. Some of them are internal, some of them are external, some of them are environmental. So things to think about. So if your art, um, is everything that you believe it is or want to believe it is or you've been told that it is it should survive the test that's fantastic if it doesn't maybe the art is fine but your understanding of the art is what's missing or the way that the art was passed on to you is uh faltering or incomplete so it might not mean just because uh, something from the art that you test that doesn't uh pass the test means the whole art gets thrown out but it may be that, boy, my teacher never really understood kicks uh, based on their background. So when they passed on the kick in this art to me, uh, okay, uh, there was a misunderstanding there, an incomplete understanding. Well, that's okay. That's why we're testing. But I want to suggest a couple different ways to test. I have um, a bob here, an old one, of course, and it's, it's unweighted, right? So we haven't had added anything. So it's just, you know, the, the amount it weighs out of the box. In other words, uh, very much showing me yielding. And then I have a post here, big old cedar post, which, I mean, I guess it's going to yield a tiny, tiny bit, but for all intents and purposes, it's not going anywhere. And then in the middle, which I don't have represented here, I could have a standard heavy bag, right? So it's a fair amount of inertia, a fair amount of resistance, and it may move. Uh, uh, so, um, so I have something like a Maki Wari here, something like a person that does an internal art who might just yield right away and then in the middle. And so I want to just suggest that we have these kind of three ways of testing something. I've been taught this move works this way or functions this way or gives us feedback or whatever. I want to test it on a variety of different um, uh, test uh, props, I guess, right? And so for me in the internal arts, I like to use something like this because with very little effort, 
I'm going to get something that I experience as yielding. And that's something that's interesting to me in Tai Chi Chuan. That's who my partner might be doing, doing something like that. Whereas if I have a standard hanging heavy bag that's 100 pounds or something, it's going to resist through inertia quite a bit of the initial uh, impetus to move it. And that's often going to invite tension in me and delay the effects. And then more to the point, right, this is essentially not going to move at all. This particular one a tiny bit, but essentially not going to move at all. So that's a really good feedback. That doesn't mean I have to be hitting it really hard or fast, but I can just be working on something like, here's my technique. What does that tell me? And I can run that test. And then I can run it on a different sort of a thing. Well-designed test, right? And so just having those sort of three different grades, right? The, uh, you know, uh, the Goldilocks <laughs> uh, one is missing here. Um, but I definitely recommend doing that so that you don't just run one sort of test and then you conclude something about the art or your teacher or the way the art was passed on because that conclusion is exactly what you're going to pass on. And we'd like to uh, pass on more comprehensive conclusions uh, where able. So direct your efforts, please. Thank you.